of 14. These pure quantified proofs will all basically go this way. And there's a summary of the strategy on page 288, unit 15, which is a very important page. Um, CQNs at the top and the bottom, if necessary. When are they necessary? When the statements are negations, um, but are one, one CQN away from being in proper quantified form. So you transform everything into quantified form, then you do instantiations, true functional reasoning, true functional reasoning, true functional reasoning, get the instance you need, and then the generalization, and then you're done. These will be the pure quantifier problems that you've distinguished from the, um, the mixed quantifier problems, which is when you've got your premises and conclusion in the form of, say, disjunctions, where the disjuncts are quantifier statements. You get lots of practice with that in question four from the exercises of unit 15. And um, some of the four unit 14 stuff, like it's quantifier form and truth functional compounds of quantifier statements, is getting you ready for that. So we'll return to that in a minute. But just for now, to see how a pure quantifier one goes. Okay, um, as you will learn, um, so the rule for this will be universal instantiation. The rule will apply to this will be existential instantiation. So the quantifiers, um, you will learn that you should always do existential instantiation before universal instantiation, because existential because existential instantiation is a hard rule or a flag rule, whereas universal instantiation is a easy rule or a non-flag rule. I won't tell you why. We'll elaborate when we get to fifteen. But you're your strategy will be you have to do EI before UI when you're doing EIs, existential instantiations, and universal instantiations. So what is instantiation? You delete the quantifier and you replace the variable quantified over all the instance of this variable, let's say the X, with the same instance letter. So I forget about the quantifier, I delete that, and I just write F, replacing X with A, I'm instantiating to the individual A, and HA, right? That's the result of instantiating. That's E, I, four, okay? <laughs> You're looking at my proof and typing here. Okay, so notice the result of this instantiation. Notice especially the change in form. This is a existential statement. This is not a conjunction. This formula is not a conjunction because a formula is in only one form. This is in quantified form, satisfies the two conditions, right? So it is in quantified form, is an existential statement, therefore is not a conjunction. But it's also true that the major operator of the propositional function is a conjunction, right? But the result of that, right, is a conjunction. The major operator of this thing is the dot, that is a conjunction. Okay, the takeaway from that is this is a conjunction, which means true functional reasoning applies which means, right, oh, conjunctions, I simplify, right? I could go right now, six, seven, um, okay, I'll do it. Six, seven, F, A, right? Six, H, A, right? Five, you have a simp five. And ditto, right? This is the simp I've simpl simplified from this. I've got these two formulas, right? This is the true functional reasoning after the instantiations. Okay? Oh, um, by the way, you have to write flag A when you instantiate. You'll see much more in um, the 15. All right. Uh, then I do the universal instantiation, right? Um, I could have done it at step six, maybe. Doesn't matter. Um, but universal instantiation, again, I delete the quantifier and I replace the variable with the same instance. So what do I get? I get F, A, hook, H, A. Let's see, mate. Let's see. Uh, you made a mistake at step six. Otherwise, it's pretty good. <laughs> All right. So I've got this conditional now as a result. F, A, hook, H, A. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible with existentials. Okay. Um, the justification for that is going to be universal instantiation from three, right? Again, I don't expect you to be following everything that's going on. I'm just showing you the first step of, of how a proof goes. But this is the big climax that we're heading toward for unit 15. Okay, 
is A, we've got F A and H A, so I just indent it's not indented for any reason, just because I'm untidy. Um, and notice that this is a conditional. The result of instantiating from this changes form from a universal statement to a conditional, and look what I've got. So I've just said truth functional reasoning after the instantiations. I've got I've got a conditional and I've got the antecedent of the conditional. Thus I can infer by modus ponens. Right? So see that mod after the see that after the instantiations, things like simplification and modus ponens apply. Doing truth functional reasoning. So I get H A H A by well, by modus ponens, right? And now I've got what I've got. Huh? I didn't finish my H, thank you. Okay. Modus ponens. And then, then I can conjoin F and H. F A and H A to get F A and H A by the rule of conjunction. Right? This one is modus ponens, modus ponens, and then there's a conj. Why have I do, done this? As you'll learn um, in 15, uh, this is the the instance. This is in the form of a premise for an existential generalization. The generalization rules. Like the instantiation rules, there's an easy one, there's a hard one. E.G. E is the easy one, the non final universal instantiation is the hardest rule of all, causing all sorts of headaches. But for now, FA and HA, right, um, I'm allowed to infer that if the individual A, what have I derived? I've derived that the individual A, A for Andrew, right, this is A is an individual constant referring to some individual. Andrew is both F and A, therefore there exists an X, which is both F and A. Sorry, which is both F and H. It's a universally true uh, inference, it doesn't need to be restricted, right? Andrew is F and H, therefore there exists an X, some X, which is both F and H. Yes, that's true, right? And that's it. Um, I've got my EG from whatever that number is, 10, 11, 12, whatever. And then CQM to get the conclusion. Damn it, that's too long. Um, right? And that's my proof. Um, okay, so that's your first instance of how a proof goes. Um, we'll come back and. Uh, so that was all by way to anticipate what um, the unit, why the unit 14 lesson is so important, big unit 14 lesson. Distinguish <coughs> formulas in quantified form from those which are not in quantified form, right? And um, the major application of that is going to be in proofs. Recognize this and that conclusion as not in quantified form as rather negations such that you need to transform them, in this case, in most cases, by CQN, such that you can do the instantiation, such that you can apply the instantiation and generalization rules. Um,